hope he's no dummy, right? I mean, hold on, I, I, I you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he's what? <laughs> He's a okay. monumental no, dummy. He's, 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 <laughs> he's a stupid motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, we also don't have to. We don't. There's no reason to bring in <laughs> just dumb. Yeah. That guy in the you van. You never hear white devil in these videos. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. But that guy in the van a week earlier was jumping on a homeless man's cake. Okay, that's how mean he is. <laughs> It's true, and the audio is just as good. <laughs> a pop-up cake jump. Go on. Let's put a mic in the middle of the old table. But I, but I stayed off Twitter a lot. I, I, don't, I tweeted maybe a couple times. I didn't even post on Instagram that much. I go through weird phases now with social media. Like, I don't think it's evil or bad. I, I like it. But it's like sometimes I'm like, ugh, I just have nothing to say. Yeah, I turned my alerts on for the first time on Twitter so that I get like pop-ups on my phone if somebody that I follow tweets at me or somebody verified tweets at me or something that they're like oh. this is but other than that uh I've been looking at the app mentions less unless like I send something and I want to interact with it or something but for the most part I look at the the app mentions way way less right yeah so I, I got uh I guess on Sunday I noticed a couple of tweets People asking us to address this uh, situation where Opie was talking about our show, or he thinks that I, I addressed it on Twitter. The fact that he thinks that we're, that we're upset, it's just I don't know what to say about it. Um, people, well, what did he say? Something about like uh, you know, um, you know, I've moved on, but those guys are obsessed with me. You know, just uh, like me and Anna are obsessed with him. It's fun yeah. to make fun of you. You're I fun see. to make fun of, and people are like, why don't you just unload on him? Because he hasn't given me a reason to unload. I'm not afraid to unload on him. It's more fun to make fun of him. Right. To be honest with you. Uh, and as far as pushing this, he thinks I'm pushing this narrative that his podcast sucked. I never said his podcast sucked. I actually said, you fucking dumb autistic, if you'd pay attention. Oop. I actually said that the radio show you were doing in the afternoon was funny. And I thought you did good on it. And it was like you sounded happy and you sounded comfortable. The podcast, well, if you want to set up a mic in the middle of a table and have eight guys yelling at each other and hope that people can pick it up, that's your business. You don't think anybody ever said the podcast sucked. Um, I didn't say it wasn't funny. Yeah. I like the guys that are on it. Also, it's weird because it, it felt like this whole thing started. Fucking paranoid idiot. <laughs> Shut up. It felt like, and I'm sure that a lot of this has to do with, Ugh. you know, old school radio realizing that if you start a radio beef, it's going to get eyes and ears on whatever. I, don't, I, I encourage people, run to his podcast and enjoy. Right. I'm not one of these people, have a listen to it. <laughs> There's enough clips with three likes. I mean, I get it. Be, believe me, social media is grabbing it and running with it. It, be, it seemed like it started with Voss coming in and saying, I don't even remember. Voss, he barely said anything. He said that Opie said that oh. he sucked on the radio. And it was like this sort of offhanded thing. It was two minutes of conversation. But it was it, it seemed like it was direct response to something right. that Opie had said about Voss somewhere. I didn't really know if he said it on a podcast or on Twitter or whatever. But... It was a response to something that was said, and then it, it started like the the narrative shifted into, you know, Opie's name is just coming up out of nowhere. So he said Voss wasn't funny on the radio. That's what Voss said that he said. Okay, well, if when that, he was in here on Wednesday, or I, I Tuesday hope that or that's whatever. not it. Well, I heard uh, that when I ramble in radio, it's very uncomfortable. It is. That's what I heard. Oh, you know, that I'm, who that, said that? <laughs> I don't, that I'm really good at one-liners, uh -huh. but sometimes my rambling makes everybody uncomfortable. And That's who said that? Your wife? No, no. <laughs> I heard that on a, a podcast or something. Someone said that. Oh, yeah, I did hear a rumor. It's very difficult to do radio with you. Uh, Wait, who said that? I'm, I'm straining. Huh? I want you to know no, something. I'm straining. I know. I've never who brought said anything to the table in 15 Wait, minutes. Wait, who said mm -hmm. you're difficult to do radio with? Uh, let's see. Say a funny mofo. <laughs> <laughs> Same. He also said that about David Tell and Otto. What are you talking about? He said it about Colin too. Oh boy, <laughs> that's true. Well, who's let's, let's. That's true. Are we still playing with pronouns? Uh, at this point? What's he promoting? Uh, a tell is hard to do radio with. He said. I, I mean, that's the truth. You either believe me or not believe me. Travis is shaking his head. Yes. If we're gonna go this Stop far into it. it. You should probably use a proper noun to explain who you're talking about. He said that you're hard to do radio with. Yeah, yeah, literally, I mean, as I much mean, as people in the room uncomfortable when I started rambling. Who said that? 
You know what you don't do? You didn't block funny moments. Voss is one of the funnest guys. Like, we love, yeah. we make fun of each other. That's what we do as friends. You're not uncomfortable to do radio with. You're uncomfortable to, to, to have an educated discussion with. Right. <laughs> sure, you're uncomfortable to pull a train with because you're so selfish. <laughs> But you're fucking easy to do radio with. It's it's not been difficult. It's never, not for a moment, been difficult. Who no, doesn't love when Voss rambles? No one, <laughs> no one. You know why? Because you're a guy who mispronounces a lot of words, but doesn't say to me off the air, hey, could you not make fun of that? It's uncomfortable for me. Yeah. So who said that, Voss? Who? I've been, I've been hearing pronouns and mofos and stuff. I know. I think his name's Greg. Okay. All right. All right so no. I hope you said you're hard to do radio with. You're not there. hard to do radio with. You're easy hey. to do. Because no, honestly, no one has a better sense of humor about themselves than Rich Voss. Like, Voss is willing to take his shirt off every show. Yeah, I might even do it to get it over with now before I eat. Do you want to do it? Rich, if uh, you could do this without being difficult, where well, are you going to Where where are you going to be? It's Friday and Saturday, <laughs> Uncle Vinny's, Point Pleasant, New Jersey, Uncle Vinny's. Then I got... Uh, Looks great. Do you think Voss is hard to do? I can't believe that. You're not. Said it. <laughs> I've done radio. People ramble. The country for 25 when, fucking years. If you ramble about something, it's funny. It's even if it's stupid, it's funny. Who cares? Uh, it it's makes a comedy no sense. fucking show. It makes no sense. If I rambled so much, why did he give us a radio show? Just, you, you, you know, you can't argue. <laughs> That's like saying you can't argue logic with just. Ugh. I addressed it. Where on my podcast? When. I think last week. Okay, last good. Week. Which is the only no. person that comes to do a radio show, shows Jim a photo, and then talks off my... Yeah, but, yeah what exactly. What possible value He's showing a cyst in a uh, jar. <laughs> I'm hard to do radio with. That's right. That is true. That's you right. know what? My The officer was right. You certainly are. <laughs> I can't believe I thought you were good to do radio <laughs> with, and you're talking oh, off sure. mic with a, a, a jar of cyst <laughs> photo. <laughs> right, once again, he nailed you. Because Voss has said... More funny things in a month than Opus said in his entire career. Mm. You're going to say Voss isn't funny on the radio? Or you are your fucking mind. Oh, hard to do radio, oh, to do radio like with? That. Stop. Yeah. Just fucking stop it. Oh, I know what he said. Uh, he said that Ant's a dry drunk. Uh, I'm a dry drunk and Ant's an alcoholic. Fair point. <laughs> okay, so you won't argue no, that. No, I'm not going to argue. <laughs> Ant is an alcoholic. <laughs> and I was not many times a dry drunk. I can't argue that. It seemed like that was the big, like, oh, how's, how's Jimmy going to respond oh, to being care. called a dry drunk? It's a fair point. There's times I came in, I was a complete cunt. But the bottom line is this. You know, I have to know that there's times I was cunty. I'm not fucking a victim. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm sorry. I'm not, a, I'm not a delusional narcissist who thinks he's a victim. At times I was very difficult. But it's funny that I'm really still close with Anthony and we still have fun together. I'm still good friends with Troy. I'm still good friends with Sam. I'm still good friends with Travis. I still get along with Nathaniel when I see him. I'm still good friends with Club Soda Kenny. Uh, what other people? Uh, I'm still good friends with Iraq. I still talk to Iraq. All people. What does he say? Like, hey. hey <laughs> call me. <laughs> all people who are also still friends with Anthony. So all of us are still friends. The only one that we're not friends with and who are not friends is him. Oh, Voss, I forgot to mention. I'm still good friends with you Voss. You are still friends I'm with... still good friends okay. with Bobby Kelly. I'm not saying Bobby hates him, but I'm, I, I don't think Bobby enjoys him. Uh, right. Let's be honest. All of us are still friends. All now, of us still get along, are still comfortable with each other. He's the one who doesn't. So you can paint it like it's everybody out to get you. If, you, if you're saying to yourself, why is it always me? Well, then you should really question that for real. Why is it always you? Why is it? Do you think we all talked it over? Do you there ever was. think, <laughs> instead of just giving the shallow, and I've looked at my shit, do you ever just think there is something fundamentally wrong with you that almost everyone who's interacted with, the Stangles, for Christ's sake. No, oh, there's a new world order. There's a conspiracy of all the radio people. They're coming against me. But do you know what I'm saying? Like, does, does it ever occur to you as a person? That there is something fundamentally wrong with the way you interact with people, why nobody likes you? What do you, what do you think, that people just email each other and go, yeah, let's not like them today? It's a natural reaction. Let's create a narrative. Let's all get to Now, what, it, what, what was the comment? Because that was the other thing that I think you wanted to address. Was He said something along the lines of, of reinventing the show and, and sticking to the formula. Was he saying that, Anthony's show that he does on Compound was the same ONA. I think he was saying that you and I, ha you and I had an opportunity. What if we do some 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 past history here and we take the shit thing with the news and just 
take photos of people shitting, like Roland. <laughs> okay, I don't know if that'll work. <laughs> well, just, at least that's creative. We're bringing something new. It's not just news. H- historically, <laughs> hasn't yeah. worked out well. Hasn't worked yeah, out that all right. great. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of something new that hasn't been done yet. First of all, we have an opportunity to do something new and fresh, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't want to misquote mm-hmm. him. We have an opportunity to do something new and fresh, and we're doing the same old thing. First of all, you still use the theme song. <laughs> and second of all, the only Opie and Anthony tweets I ever, or clips I ever tweet, uh, tweet are Anthony. I do think twit is the past of tweet. Uh, yes, and it's also appropriate when I'm talking about him. <laughs> uh, when Anthony makes Jimmy laugh, those clips I will retweet. But I'm not the one on the YouTube channel who is obsessively retweeting shit from the old days. It's not what I do. I'm not always trying to grab the Opie and Anthony clips and sending them out. Again, an Anthony makes me laugh clip once in a while, a Patrice clip, sure. I'm not the one still riding that wave as far as, hey, look at this clip from six years ago. I'm not doing it. Yeah. And as far as our show is concerned, the only clip we use that is similar to the old days is the car crash. Everything else is a new clip. Every clip we have in the opening is from this show. Do you want the exact tweet? Uh, Yes, please. They had a great opportunity to develop a brand new show, but instead relied on the now old ONA formula with the same tired, played out guests. It comes down to a lack of experience and laziness. To do radio correctly <laughs> takes a lot of work. Is, oh. is, 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 the, is the autism behind that statement amazing? <laughs> I, I, is, is, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention Travis. Do you like him? I I have not spoken to him. The last time I saw him, and this tell this will tell you everything you need to know, was uh, when he was still working here, mm. and uh, it was in the afternoon, and I was coming back here uh, to do something, and we ended up being on the same subway. We were in the same car, and we noticed each other, and I said hey, and he said hey when we got out of the subway, and I went to walk up to him. And he turned around and kept walking. Yeah, he's, yeah again, just a fucking baby boy. We, he, he he has this tendency of deciding people are enemies. Like, I don't yeah. think people yeah, really... Yeah, I, I, I guess I was yeah. just an asshole. Yeah, and, and it's everyone, but I, I get it. I don't I know if, if... Oh, I mentioned Club Soda Kenny, yeah. I don't know if, if it was spoken with to you guys, or if he was worried that you guys were still talking to me. But I know that when I was doing... Before we started doing, even doing a show together, Jim, like, when I was doing my show at night, he already decided that I was working against him somehow. Oh, and there's another tweet. Anyone else find it sad that two shows had to rely on me again because they're too lazy to prepare for a show? Well, what else were we going to rely on you for? The laughs? No. <laughs> it also, the, the show prep thing I thought was funny, too. Two because... shows obsess about me. Meanwhile, this fucking douche has been so obsessed with Howard. Do you know how embarrassing that shit was? How? Shut up. I was in the hall when I met Howard. He sat at the table and kept his fucking face down at the table like a six-year-old scared that fucking the boss had walked in. Mm. I walked up to Howard. I'm like, hey, my name is Jim. He goes, I know who you are, man. He was really nice. And Ope sat on on the fucking uh, two seats away, like in the lobby, just kind of staring down, not wanting. So stop it. Stop talking about people being obsessed. We worked with you for a long time. None of us like you. I don't hate him, and people are like, why don't you just unload on him? Because I don't hate the guy. Like, I don't wish him bad. He right. started me in radio. Do you know, by the way, what a fucking prick you have to be <laughs> to have changed my life and to have me not like you? You're a pretty loyal guy. I'm a fiercely loyal <laughs> fucking dude. Yeah. I would never badmouth. If Dice fucked my mother, I'd badmouth her before I badmouth him. Yeah. I mean, and, I'm, and, and, and I, don't, I don't have any ill will, and I find it difficult to even, like, I, I don't see a scenario where I would ever unload, quote-unquote, because I feel the same way. Like, I wouldn't... Oh, I see a scenario. Yeah. If you unload it on me, I would absolutely do it. Well, I also... You and Anthony uh, come from very different perspectives. You had to sit in a very different seat, right, than I did. And while right. I have my own issues, like he did, I I feel the same way. He got me started here. Sure. You know, I I don't think that you or I would have you know, squandered in obscurity had it not been. We, we would have found a way, but... It wouldn't have been radio that's... for me, and it got me my fan base. Right. But I've been... But I've been... I could not have been a more fucking... No one has talked more about the Opie and Anthony show and what it did for them than I have. Yeah. No one has spoken nicer about Opie in interviews over the years than I have. Like, when I'm going to promote a special, and he's got the whole fucking cake stomp thing, and I gotta go on podcasts and just be like, look, this is what happened, and I'm giving his narrative, and this is why he did it. 
Ugh. Doesn't count, though. It's just delusional. Yeah. And as far as you trying to reinvent the wheel, what do you, the same guests, you're on with Vic Henley and Sherrod, both guys who I brought to you. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? And again, I love those guys. And I like Carl. I know with those guys, and I have nothing wrong. Like, you should be bringing Sherrod and Vic on. Those guys are funny dudes. Fine. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I, I, think, I think everybody associated with the show is, is... And you're the one who lost your morning slot because you took off in August. That's why you lost the morning slot, because you took off in August. So don't talk about being lazy. You wanted to sit on the fucking dumb beach while we came in and did shows. Yeah. Oops. There's also, I mean, when you talk about being too lazy to prepare, there's only two people that ever did show prep for the opening. Thank you, buddy. Show. Well, they both work him, here. I mean, yeah, let them finish the sentence. Oh, yeah. sorry. I thought you were going to point me out. Right, no, no. <laughs> no, there's, <laughs> there, there's, there's only two people that ever did any sort of preparation for Opie and Anthony for the whole show. Um, and they both still work here. Jim, unfortunately, you are not one of them. I'm not on that list. No, no the list would be... Uh, Travis Teft, Sam Roberts. Oh, but you're lazy. The... You don't. You just said you were lazy. You don't do show prep. Yeah, well, the list would conclude at the end of. But he does show prep, like 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 when an interview person would come in, he go, "You got this." I don't know who this is. <laughs> That's good. Good. Ray Liotta said to him, "Are you sick?" Because <laughs> he wasn't. He didn't know what to say to Ray Liotta. <laughs> right, but we're lazy. I was yeah, doing so... stand up and and fucking getting uh, till till uh, getting going to bed at twelve, getting up at five, or coming in on no sleep, and then fucking going on the road. But I'm lazy. Shut the fuck up. I would like to think that most people see through this. You know what I mean? Of and see it for what do. it is. But it's it's like it's an it's irritating. And then and then the old standby of well, they gotta talk about me. It's like just shut how about a funny response? How about I enjoy making fun of him. I think it's more fun to do. And uh but it also believe makes me, you laugh. It it truly makes me laugh. And the bottom line is Chip is on his side. <laughs> Chip is not on my side. Right. Chip is on his side. Right. But by the way, if you if you put up clips of your show and it gets six likes on social media and Chip Chipperson gets four hundred making fun of you, you really need to reevaluate what you're doing. Chip is crushing, dude. That's the truth. Chip is crushing. There's, I don't want to obsess over this all day, but, uh, you know, if there's anything we didn't address. Yeah, I feel like I, I feel like it's been addressed, but I, I'm not. I can't I'm think also of anything. not trying to yeah. slow you down in any way, shape or form. No, I think that was it. It was just I, I saw a couple of uh, tweets. And I did. I did see the one clip. I didn't want to misquote it. So I'm glad you brought that up. No, yeah. no we don't have to talk about it. But, yeah, people get the numbers up. Go look at his podcast. <laughs> Maybe it's great. I've yeah. heard clips of it. Uh, the words I could make out were fine. What do you mean the words? This is hard to hear with a clinking of silverware. <laughs> Sorry, we're using the same old guests. We're trying to bring stupid comedians like Rich Voss and Mark Norman on while you got fucking, uh, hey, this is fucking, uh, this is Jack. Uh, he's a waiter here who had a DUI. All right, cool. Let's talk to him for two hours. Using the same old technology of yeah. microphones in a studio. Yeah, I know. What are we, stupid? We're lazy. Uh -huh. We're lazy because we don't want to put one mic on a table and order a, a craft beer. Lazy us. I don't understand why you would call all these comedians tired. Old. Like, I, I'll tell you why. He's the it's funniest called, people I've ever here's met. Here's why. Because he's stupid. Oh. Rich, Bob, Colin, Bill. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's stupid. That's why. He's a stupid motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, we also don't have to. <laughs> we don't. There's no reason to bring in. <laughs> Just dumb. Here's the. Here's here's what we're doing on. Jim and Sam. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Same tired guests. Funniest guys are, are, are the comics on this show. There's nothing better than the comics bashing when Anthony was here, everybody bashing each other, and then somebody not feeling like they were included. All right, time to go to break. Yeah, well done. You know, I Good think timing. Wesley Snipes went to jail and... Patrice and, and, and Ant went on a whole rant about Wesley Snipes going for three years, and Opie stepped in and fucked the whole bit up. <laughs> How did he fuck the bit up? <laughs> he, he wouldn't let them keep going because he, he, can't, he can't do voices. He's not very off-the-cuff funny. And one of the dynamics that would crush the show is that when Ant and Patrice would obviously show that <laughs> that that Opie wasn't necessary for the show. <laughs> Opie would interject himself and go, "Oh, in another news, a plane crash." And you go, "Wait, wait, wait, wait! We're, we're on to something. We just 
put Wesley Snipes in Shawshank Redemption. Don't you get it, motherfucker? And then he would fuck it up. Oh, so he fucked up. I, I've seen the, a bit of the animation about the bit, but uh, I didn't realize that he. Anyway, uh, if we could talk about this memo, uh, the FBI. Yeah, memo exactly. Was... <laughs> exactly. All right. I love it. Thanks, Y'all Ali. The Montreal shows are just the perfect example of what we're doing, which is we're not throwing anybody out. We're bringing all the hilarious people that have been doing shows on this channel and what this channel was for years, also bringing new people in, but. Evolving it, not uh, evolving, doesn't mean throwing out the old formula because you're insecure and starting something fresh and using that kind of as an excuse. It's taking all the good stuff and then adding more good stuff. Well, no, it's starting a new formula because you couldn't get hired anywhere, so you got to do a podcast. And again, that's not even a knock on. That's just the business is the business. And uh, hey, I'm lazy. You took nine months to start a podcast. Yeah. Nine months to start a pie. Chip did it in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Chip is a workhorse, though. And this is what people don't understand about Chip. He's not the most intelligent guy in the world. He's not the funniest guy in the world. But Chip Chipperson is a goddamn workhorse, okay? People need to need to give that respect. What Chip lacks in any sort of uh, awareness, intelligence, broadcasting ability, he makes up for. In work ethic. In work ethic. In pure yeah. work ethic. And I'm from the same school of thought. You know, am I Mr. Excitement? Am I Mr. Hilarious? Yes. No, I oh. was going with the work sorry, ethic. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, okay. I, I didn't mean to it's interrupt. Okay. It's okay. We're still working on our chemistry. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Um. All right. Should we move on? Um, someone, someone said Jim blames you for everything. Somebody, I think, uh, Opie fan trolls Opie. I believe I, I'm like that couldn't be a real person. Uh, somebody tweet. Jim is talking more shit about you once again. He blames you for everything. That's yes. true. He blames yes, you for everything. It's all his fault. Yes, terrible. <laughs> all his fault. By the way, what's to blame? Everybody's doing well. I'm fine. You, you don't think that guy's real? Uh, no, I don't. I, I don't think he's real. But uh, you think he thinks he's real? I hope so. <laughs> See, I, I, like... I, 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 and by the sorry, sorry, one one thing I like is when you don't, when your narcissism is is, is put you in this position, and you're still saying why me? I don't mind that. That doesn't make me angry. A part of me is like, you know what? Good. You just keep wondering why it's you. In my professional life, there has been one one. One ultimate and true betrayal that I regret because it's not in my nature. I'm a loyal person. I'm a good person. And I'm a man of my word. There's been one ultimate and true betrayal that if I could take back, I would. What's that? And that is to scorch. Yes. My mentor. You would. The person who, as sexy Disco Inferno on Twitter pointed out, Sam owes everything he knows and has to scorch. This is true. Uh, and, and I would, as we're talking about, you know, radio and what we've done in the past, I would like to take this moment to apologize for my misgivings, for my comments in the past, for the things that I did to betray Scorch. I think it's about time that I owned up to it and apologized for that, that in my, as I look back at my professional life, who have you wronged and what would you have done differently? Yeah. Who helped me? What regrets do you have? That would be the number one. I I apologize to Scorch. Fair enough. And I hope at some point, I I don't blame him if he never forgives me, but I do hope at some point he does. He finds it in his heart to forgive me because he is he's the master. Fair enough. You know that's a good apology. That I that that I regret. But you have to. You know, it's funny when you look at like the you look at the, the the case evidence around you. You're right. I was a dry drunk at times. Anthony's an alcoholic. Why do we still love doing radio together? Like, why is he still my friend? And as far as I'll, I'll say it one more time, I fought for him. I don't know what you said to Greenstein, but I know that in the studio, I brought him up all the time off the air and got zero back. Fans can believe what they want. Believe what you want. Yeah. I'm telling you, I, I would say we got to get him in, at least have him come in or call in or whatever. Zero back. So, you know, if there's anything else, you guys can uh, let us know. I did not see uh, Michael. In, let's just go to Michael in Wisconsin. All right. Because I did not see what you're asking. Uh, what's up, bud? Michael in Wisconsin. Sammy Brown and Jimmy. What's up, buddy? <laughs> hey, I, I can't believe you guys haven't seen Ant's rant 
uh, Opie, Opie had a text out that said he defies anybody to find a funnier uh, podcast. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, I swear to God, I watched it Sunday on YouTube, man. I laughed my balls that. off. I couldn't believe it. He didn't really say that. He didn't say I defy you to find... Oh, did he say, what is a funnier... What, did he, what was the tweet about that? I defy you to find a funnier podcast? Oh, he's tweeted. I don't know something about uh, something that's as consistently funny. Anthony took him off on a challenge. Did Anthony list things that were consistently funnier? Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> was it more than two things? <laughs> yes, and it's things that you generally wouldn't consider to be funny. Like what? Name one. Baby death. <laughs> oh, that's not funny at all, man. He said those were funny. <laughs> You'd probably enjoy it. <laughs> I didn't hear it. That's not funny. Did he mention nine eleven? Okay, okay Peter, no. Peter and I would have. <laughs> that was one of the saddest <laughs> days in our history. Yep. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Oh, oh that's right. The big talk with Bichetti. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm not even hearing it. I'm just watching Ann's face. And I can see, <laughs> see that he's talking about the big thing with Bichetti. He almost does the fist thing. He does. Ugh. Yeah. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> But that, you know, look, I'll, I'll be very truthful with you. I don't. I truly don't hate the guy. It, it, but for for you to change my life and for me to have animosity to you, you really have to be a prick. You really have to be a prick. Because even when Dice was having that problem with ONA, Dice never badmouthed me, and I was glad he didn't because I loved him. And I'm like, fuck, I don't want to ever have bad blood with Andrew. He changed me. You know, he did so much. Do you think everybody? <sighs> associated with that show has come to terms with the fact yet that you guys, us guys, I guess, you three more than anybody else, but I think we're all just attached at the hip for life. It's just never going to be, okay, we're moving on. Like, it, it's, it's, everybody is so, there is something about that Opie and Anthony show that it is, it is an infection. Maybe the virus was the greatest terminology ever phrased because it is never going to go away the the thing that links everybody associated with that experience is never going to go away a hundred percent it doesn't bother me because again i came in they were already opie and anthony i already have my own stand-up yeah so i had something that separated me a little bit like you have your own existence outside of radio even though radio did so much for me um but yeah, Opie and Anthony were already there. So for those guys, it might be a little harder just because they were a team, which is like what made them. You know what I'm saying? Like for yeah. me, as a stand up, at least you have a solo thing you can do every night and you can kind of uh, get away. But the problem was look, as far as Ope and or myself is concerned, I love doing this show with you. I truly do. Mm -hmm. The Opie and Anthony show is the funniest show that any of us will ever be associated with. I that, mean, it's, it's, it's radio history, it's, right? It's that show when it was clicking on all cylinders and Patrice was coming in and fucking Otto and all these guys and fucking Bill Burr. That, it's the funniest show any of us will ever do. The, right. the combination was just there. The staff was amazing. I mean, you could literally argue that it's the funniest show in the history of radio. In terms of funny? It, as far as laughs are concerned... Hey, look, I don't want to say it because I, but it was a funny fucking show. Right. Um, and Ope was great at what he did, and Ant and I defended him all the time. People would badmouth him. He but 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 we know you don't understand. For years, we stuck up for this guy. But it was also not one person, right? It was it was all the elements associated with that is what made it that. The problem with Ope and why people got mad at him is as a straight guy, and as a great straight guy. He began to watch two other people playing in the sandbox, and he felt left out. And then he got resentful of his role. And he became resentful because he felt like he didn't have a place. And then he started to get resentful, and that would come out. It was almost like uh, on the Letterman show when Ant talked more, and they had such a great appearance. It was so good for those guys. Ope was great. Ant was great. And, you know, Ope's a straight guy. Ant talked more. And then people goofed on that. And I remember Ant made fun of him for it, like just joking. And Ope goes, dude, you make fun of me for that. I don't like like, Like, the comics attack each other relentlessly, but don't make fun of me for that. Like, come on, man. Like, you're that, resenting that that role that you have. Who cares? That's how I feel when you and Travis start laughing about Schnatter's pies. 
I feel like these two guys, I want to be included too. We love a good Schnatter's pie. I know. Reference. I feel like I feel like you two and your Schnatter's pies, and you just don't forget about old Sam. Old Sam. There's no slice of Schnatter's left for old Sam. There's always a hot sh- slice of Schnatter's pie for you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate you piping hot. That. Yeah, but I, you like that's you like a piping hot. Yeah, yeah it can't pie. be cold. Yeah. Some pizza you can eat cold. <laughs> Schnatter's, Schnatter's pie has got to be hot. <laughs> well, the phones are very very lit up. Um, I mean, you, you know, people, people love it. People do, but I, and look, what do you want me to do? If you're gonna try, on Twitter, I'll make fun of you. I enjoy making fun of people. Like, why don't you go off on me? For a long time, I didn't. For nine months, I didn't. Because I have a lot of built up resentment. It happens when a guy is your boss. Mm-hmm. And why did I come? Of course, it's for the money. It's yeah. my job. What are you doing? Uh, gigolo? Oh, no, that's what I pay to take it. Oh. <laughs> but uh, I didn't for nine months because he didn't have a gig. And it was almost like I don't want to bash the guy when he's not on radio. Like I really didn't. I mean, he's, he has no play, no platform other than Twitter. Right. So if he wants to unload, feel free, man. Feel free. I, I'll engage in that all day, every day. If you want to just do your show, do your show. Yeah. But if you fucking open your mouth about me, I'm gonna I'm gonna respond, and that's that's fine. Yeah. But it, I, I don't feel necessarily hateful. It's more fun to goof to goof on him. But it's not, I'm not afraid to bash him. It's just I'm gonna do a ten minute rant. Like, you fucking piece of shit. Come on. It's yeah. more fun to fucking make fun of them and, uh, you know, holy S. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I have zero. <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> Anthony is such a funny motherfucker. I have zero ill will in general. Like I, I wouldn't do... say I have zero ill will. I have a good amount of it. Why? Well, yeah, I, I, I think at the I end of the, him. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, this is like, I, I'm on the periphery of this thing. Yeah, you know what I mean. This is this is something that's a little bit more deep seated between the the three of you. Two the two of us and him. Not right. the three of us. Right. Two it's of us not like him. it's. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I and and that's natural, right? I don't know if it is or how much of it is natural. I don't know. I, I just in a triangulation like that, it shouldn't have been. No, it really shouldn't have been because uh, you know it, it it was working. Yeah, I do wish at some point the three of you would just sit down. It never happen. It, I know it, it will never happen. Just I, it's like it's like it, you guys are. It's just such a weird thing. Because you're you're all adults, you should be able just the three of you to sit down, have a singular conversation, and then everybody move on. But it it's it's just not going to happen. It's the craziest thing in the world. It, it could just the whole thing could be done, and everybody could just have some peace in their lives. Not that you know you don't have peace in your life, but, but I, I know, what you know what you're saying, saying. Yeah, it could, it could, and I'm sure that in your life. You have had issues with other people that a conversation sure. has fixed. Of course. There could be a three-person sit-down conversation where we have this conversation and it's over. But for various reasons, it's just never going to happen. Because it's we the don't goddamn li- Batman I'll, and Joker. I'll tell you what it is. We don't like each other. Oh. Ant doesn't like him. He doesn't like Ant. I don't like him. He doesn't like me. Oh. Ant and I are friends. It is what it is. Yeah. I, but again, there, it's not a hatred where I fucking hope he fuck it. It's not like that. Uh, but there's nothing to say. What are we going to say if we sit down? You know what I mean? Like, what is there to fucking talk about? You know, the show was a hugely successful show. I've thanked him. He, I, I, don't, I, can't, I couldn't be any more grateful. But I'm just going to say, if you only understood how the comedians really felt, I'm only going to say that. I mean, I could get from that. Not, I don't probably, mean you, Sam. I mean him. If you only understood, I bet he could guess. Though it's not a like a. Positive. And he'll probably say about me. You know what they say about you? Yeah, I'm sure. By the way, you've probably heard what they say about you. They've said it too. <laughs> yeah. I'm friends with all of them. We're funny together. Right. They don't look and go, Jesus, what the fuck was it getting cut off? Like, like when you start to resent your role. I mean, even the even the Mark Norman came in here and he told you all the young comics think that you hate them because you're such a fucking social weirdo. Yeah, but it was like it's, I was surprised to hear that because I love those guys. I think right. he's hilarious. Joe List is hilarious. I just I, I am socially awkward. You like are. I think people don't like me or I'm annoying them. Well, that's I mean that's partly true as well. It certainly is. Yeah. But I mean I'm a weird dude. Like a lot, of, but it's not out of dislike. It's 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 and maybe that's what his problem is. You know what? Maybe that's Ann's problem. We all have our fucking deep seated insecurities. Oh yeah. But I I know I was difficult at times dude like i like he said something like nobody gave a shit about what i said it's like man if you're on the radio and you're looking across at me and i'm sitting there and he could tell i couldn't stand him so yeah i was certainly a contributor to the toxicity especially if it was just me and him uh, but i was a contributor me and aunt contributed by fucking uh hating him together so i get it i mean i'm not innocent of it and i'm not completely blameless 
I just look at my interactions with you guys and with comedians in general. And if there's an issue we have or whatever, we just kind of talk it out and that's it. Yeah. Not a big deal. I don't have any resentment against any of you guys. No, I don't either. I mean. Yeah, I don't think there's any worry, at least on my end, of bringing something to you that's a, that's a concern or a criticism. Sure. Well, because you know? we're, we're in the, for the first time, I think everybody here is in a position where we would just tell each other if there was something like that. You know, yeah. if there's any sort of thing, I feel weird about this, I want to do this, I want to do that. Everybody, hosts and staff included, would just <laughs> talk to each other, Could tell each other. Go to Matt in Arkansas, please. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> Matt in Arkansas, What's do you up? have a contribution? Hello, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I believe... <laughs> Uh, one of the things Anthony found funnier than Opie's podcast was a train ride to Auschwitz. Oh, God. <laughs> Such a tragedy. It though. said Ashwood, by the way, on the fucking screen. Well, maybe the you know, phone screen doesn't know history as well. But yeah, the Ashwood, uh, yes. The Jews were sent to Ashwood. I actually thought Ashwood was a place on Long Island. I had no idea that was Ashwood. <laughs> Oh, and it's funny, man. Well, yeah, so that's that, right? Yeah, it is what it is. But again, I had to because people hit me up on uh, Twitter, and uh, it's just, you know, Voss isn't funny. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. It's not that Voss difficult. is not hard to do radio with. Voss is hard to do radio with when you're an insecure control freak. Rich Voss has a better sense of humor about himself than any comedian I've ever met. He can take a joke about anything you can hit Voss as hard as you want about anything dude Voss knew me when I was an intern the fact that I can fire shots at him and he's not looking at me insecure shows you especially because he could hit back I mean you've seen him when he gets upset when he gets upset he's a machine he is a machine the fact that he kind of allows me to fire shots at him and like we'll take it in good humor because he understands what's going on in the room yeah, kind of says all you need to know. Also, all you have to do is try to get him to take his shirt off, and it's a good shot. It's to just me, enjoyable. I mean, oh, oh yeah, he said not even ironically funny. Who did? Uh, who the oh. autistic? Not even ironically funny. Well, I mean, I guess we'll agree to disagree on that. Yeah, I think when Voss takes his shirt off, it's funny. I enjoy it. A and lot. you know, we could, you could not. Humor is is subjective. But if you really want to get into discussing who's funny and what's funny, we we can we can go over shit for for the next week. We can go over shit that was said that was funny and that wasn't funny. I actually really enjoy, like, it, like it's when like, bombs and flubs would come up. Uh -huh. Remember bombs and flubs? We couldn't have too many for the same person, or he'd get upset. Yeah. Who's bit? Travis, was that your bit? Yeah, I put those together. Remember, you'd have to have too many. Yep. Uh, you couldn't have too many for one person. Yep. Why not? What would be the problem? You get upset. Yep. Yeah. Did me and Rant get upset? Never. Did I ever get upset when you made fun of me on the radio? Never. Nope. Why do you think that is? Why do you think me and Anthony, who are polar opposites in many ways, especially in our lifestyle, why do you think we were so close? Like, I live next door to Opie. Like, I would see him. He's a fun guy socially. I enjoyed going to dinner with Like, the Opie could be a very fun dude. There's times where I have a love-hate thing with him. Because there's times when you go out and he's relaxed when he's comfortable. I love that guy. I truly love that guy. When he's not insecure or feeling threatened. He's a fun dude. He's a relaxed guy. He's a charming guy to be around. Like he's th this. That's a guy I genuinely loved. But maybe a drunk and a dry drunk have more in common than you think. You know, maybe, man. I don't know. But I mean, we didn't have friction off air or on. You and Anthony, you mean? None. Right. And it's not fake. We didn't fake it. Pardon my uh, stupidity, but what's a dry drunk? A dry drunk is a guy who doesn't drink but is a cunt. Like, like he still has the he still has the 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 like the symptoms yeah. of an alcoholic the way he treats people the way he acts yeah like he's miserable and a lot of times it comes from not doing like you know hey look when I'm I don't know how it works for anybody else when I'm doing twelve step shit I feel better I'm a better person when I'm not I'm a fucking cranky a uh, piece of shit, I'm resentful, I'm fucked, my attitude stinks. And I was like that a lot. So yeah, I, I heard that, I was like, oh yeah, that's a good point. I certainly was. <laughs> what the fuck am I going to do, argue? <laughs> There's also the environment, though. I mean, I, I don't, I can't say that since we've been doing the show that I've ever thought that about you. And, well, and, not, not here, no, but I, the, the, the uh, old environment wasn't conducive to sobriety, whether it, whatever issue you had, whether it was rage or alcohol or dr whatever it was, no, I wouldn't say it was the most constructive. But that's true. But still, my being a prick at times or my being a, a cunt a lot in the morning was absolutely my fault. 
I can't, I can't blame anybody for that. Like, I could have been much more relaxed about it, much less resentful, and just come in and enjoyed it. Or I could have talked to him more. I could have said, look, dude, I, I didn't do that. So I, 100%, I was fucking look, cunty a lot. There were. Uh, let's not paint this picture where, like, the whole show came in and it was like either Obi's in a good mood or Obi's in a bad mood. Anybody that was working behind the scenes will tell you. There were days when Obi was in a bad mood. There were days when Anthony was in an Anthony mood. There were days when Jim was in a Jim mood. Yes, but it was 80-10-10 <laughs> as far as the effect on the staff. Promo. It's so funny because Troy, I mean, you don't even have to deal with the worst of it. When Troy first came into the world, like this world when it actually was the Opie and Anthony show, he was just like so happy to be here. And he was like, yeah, I'm here to help everybody out. And I was like, oh, you poor, you poor little baby deer. You'll learn. Like he has, you don't even know what's about to hit you. And he, he, he went from, from smiling to, <laughs> to fists, oh, I, to, I, to I, fists I, balled up and raging I saw within, it. within I, months. Yeah, I saw Troy uh, on his angry days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they it were. Was, it was rough. The O and A days were rough. They yeah. were rough. Why? Uh, a lot of different reasons. One, you, when you guys came over from XM, you were all very angry at serious people and yeah. uh, made it very difficult on anybody serious related. So I, I was kind of in the in the mix with that. So, uh, and, you know, I understand the anger. You guys had a great studio over there and it was a, a nice setup and you guys got removed from it. But I, I was a, a casualty of, of that. Definitely. You know, and there was just you know it was it was a it was a weird work atmosphere. Do you know what I mean? Back in, in when I got, I got involved with Opie and Anthony. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. Well, you're Colin. You're gonna have. You should be the bridge over troubled waters. You should be the bridge that helps all departments communicate. Well, I, I like everybody to think... from now on go to Cullen and Cullen will go <laughs> to everybody. Yeah. I, like to th- take care I, of I say hello all the time uh, to Jim. Uh-huh. And I told yes. Jim that back in the day, me and my wife went and saw him on one of our first dates. Here's, here's the problem. And I, I, I hooked up Travis with punk you, tickets last you night. Tell it was a great se- show. Thank you, Colin. You yeah. tell secrets. Oh, but I, I, I you hope... tell production yeah, secrets. Yeah, you are a secret teller. You tell secrets. <laughs> yeah. About what pr- what promos you're working on. Those are secrets. <laughs> I was I, I was unaware that I was I was handling classified information. It's classified. I didn't I was I did not know. I just said I just said where's that promo? <laughs> and then everything went to hell. This is this is you I are mean definitely I, not going to work on Eric's podcast network. I just yeah. I just thought like in your 20s and 30s, and particularly when terrestrial radio was probably much more, um, was there was more of that Howard Stern, you know, kill or be killed. Yeah. But as you've matured, I think, like, you, you know, you guys have become friends with Artie, or you always were friends I with Artie. I love being Artie, always the love crossover, but still, and yet still the drama with the guy. And, and now I feel bad bringing it up because people get mad at me when I say it, and I'm just a fan. Uh, who from the outside was just upset you know people are like what did he ever do to you i'm like well he ruined the radio show that i enjoyed for 20 years but it has spun off and created now more shows but it's just sad what to are see you talking this about artie <laughs> for, say, for <laughs> leaving <somebody Howard>. else. <laughs> say artie for leaving howard no uh, opie oh, no opie for leaving oh opie, yeah, yeah opie for like blowing up for blowing up for everything you know, for well you know I, it sounded like he really didn't fight for anthony and then you know he alienated you which you were carrying him and now he's kind of alienated oh serious. Well, we were, he and I were, I, I'll say this, and, and, and to be really truthful. Oh, my God. No, you don't think so? I mean, no, I, me and him, no, I, I, I don't, this is just as a fan here, not as I a radio alienate, We alienated each other. I was like throwing red meat to the fans. Oh, my God. <laughs> but he's well, right. And but, you know, the best part is Sam's the biggest shit stirrer of all who just sit there and go, oh, tell yeah. me more, Matt. Oh, yeah. Tell me I'm, more. I'm the shit stirrer <laughs> going like, you know, because you carried him. And uh, <laughs> but I say this, I was difficult, too, because we yeah. didn't like each other. After, like, and I would be in cut moods when I came in. Yeah, the piss I, mist. I, I was far. I was. I was part of that <laughs> shitty vibe. But I, I. I do think I was funny. I thought the show was good, even when you guys didn't get along. Honestly, I wasn't enjoying I thought the show it was though. Good. Right. I enjoy working with Sam. Like, I really. Yeah, think but I'm you were still funny, and Opie was still good. I you thought. You could tell though. You could. You could hear the tension, and just the 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 thing that again, as a fan, as a longtime listener, that I would hear is when he would stomp on the punchlines, or when he would stomp. Yeah. On Chip, or when he was like, he didn't like. I think so, if, if Matt, I, if Matt saw Opie outside, he'd be like, Opie. I love you. I, I love these Papa videos Probably. that you're doing. You're know, nice. like a fucking smooth yeah, kiss I'm a, ass but, cunt. But like, <laughs> the, the difference would be, yeah, that it would happen less. You wouldn't have, I mean, you know, when you would get in your moods, it sure. would be difficult. 100%. But you would also kind of eventually acknowledge it. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? And it would be a little bit easier to get past and you would get out of that, right? It wouldn't be this sort of, defensiveness that would come from you. 
You know, if that makes sense. <sighs> yeah, and, and maybe it's because I'm I'm comfortable as far as being funny is concerned. Like I'm not comfortable with a lot. I'm un- I'm insecure in many ways. But as far as being funny on the radio. Especially in that environment, I'm comfortable and I'm confident and I feel okay about myself. So that's one thing that makes me, all right, at least I can relax when I'm doing that. Yeah. And I don't have a resentment against other funny people. Like I never watched guys being hilarious around me and felt, even when I wasn't being funny, I never felt resentful of them doing something I couldn't do. Um, It's like watching a bunch of people play musical instruments and then you take cymbals and start banging them together. (laughs) Like one of those wind-up monkey toys? Yeah, because you want to make some noise and you resent that there's music being played and you're not as good on your instrument. So Wouldn't instead of conducting... If the, if instead, the, if the it, conductor takes out a guitar from under his... He's like, I can play guitar too. And they're like, well, no, he's conducting now. It would be like the conductor taking that little stick that he waves and just running over and banging it on <laughs> other instruments. <laughs> Not even playing guitar. Because if, if the conductor's playing guitar, hey, at least the conductor's playing guitar, you enjoy it with him. But he's not playing guitar. He's taking his stick, and he's hitting it on the other instruments because he's resentful of the sound coming out of them. Yeah. All right, well, we've done that. We've yeah, done, we've done his commercial, right? Fair enough, and I would yeah. say, I would encourage, go listen to this show. Yes, I never course. said the show stinks. Listen uh, the to- audio quality needs something to be desired, but catch the big Mike Buschetti uh, interview. Do whatever you want. Yeah, yes. listen to the podcast, though. Go you know. enjoy it. He's, he, there's a reason. He, he, yeah, whatever. Go <laughs> listen to the podcast. He's a good broadcaster. You know. Well, I mean, I, that's why I, I, I was going to say he's a good broadcaster. There's a reason he's been doing this this long, but I didn't want to open floodgates for you to. <laughs> no, nah, okay. look, him. the bottom line is the guy changed my life. I don't hate him. Um, but you know, what do you want me to do? I don't want to talk about him all day. I don't care. We're in through show prep. Hey! Uh, bring me a craft beer. <laughs> yeah, woo, that's hard work. Good job. Oh, man. All right, what's your show prep? Uh, you got an outlet? You going to plug this in? You got an outlet? Yeah. All right. Well, hey, now- what do you do? You're just a person drinking here. Now let's move on from, from that conversation because we have somebody on the phone that wants to surprise his wife with flowers. Let's see <laughs> if his wife wants to give the flowers. To, we did some show prep today. I would love to do that. Yes. I would love to do that. Little segment we call War of the Roses. Do we have the sounder, Travis? No. Yes, we do. Here it is. <laughs> okay, uh, we have uh, a gentleman's wife is on the phone. <laughs> Where did you learn your trade, you stupid uh, fucking cunt, you idiot? Somebody texted me, what did Kenny do to Opie? Nothing. I have no idea. Nothing. Uh, what did he do to him? He fucking, he worked for him and, and did everything for him. Kenny can be crazy sometimes because Kenny's very Oh, my fast. God. But Kenny, oh, by another guy, I'm still very close. I love Kenny. Just Kenny text- and I spent... Would Kenny and I ever get on each other's nerves? Of course we would. We were together all day and then on the road together. We were like a married couple. Dude, Kenny went through six months where he didn't speak to me because we got in a fight on the air once. Kenny can be... But... Kenny harbors a resentment. He but... Can. Six I months. didn't speak to him for two years. Two years. <laughs> because we had, a, we, because we had a, a disagreement, not even an argument, a, a, a misunderstanding at one of our Hard Rock events, and it took two years to get over that. But once your time was served i love kenny all good all good once you once you put in your time served literally kenny troy and myself were on a group text this weekend <laughs> fucking with each other yeah yeah i, I love, love kenny. kenny i miss seeing him I, I, I wish he would come around more I, I do too i would love to have kenny come back in i was texting with him this weekend uh i miss him a lot too and i hated being on his bad side oh yeah, like that sucked <clears throat> yeah it was tough to serve your time yeah it is because yeah. you knew you were serving your time and it's like you wanted to have a strong face about it but you felt it. But yep. he's also, Kenny's also a guy, though. You can have uh, a discussion with him. You could talk to Kenny and go, look, man, and he would air it out with you. He really would. Kenny would never shy, because Kenny wasn't an emotional coward. Uh, <clears throat> Kenny would sit there and talk. Kenny wasn't the type to just sulk and brood like a bitch. Kenny would talk it out with you if you wanted to. Um, and and for the, that was another guy who just who cannot stand him is Kenny. Can't stand him. When I saw and for years, couldn't stand him. When I saw Opie on the subway, and we were both walking back to this office, I beat him, and I saw Kenny downstairs waiting for Opie. How badly? But five minutes at least. Oh, I thought you meant like oh, oh. with lashings. Oh. 
You said it. Well, I mean, it's figure speech. Oh, I see. And and I told Kenny what had just happened. I said, yeah, he he didn't talk to me. He said, welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's just, right. before we wrap this up, let's address Steve in New Jersey, because you're okay. incorrect, Steve. Okay. What's up, Steve? What's up, Steve? Hey, guys. Hey, buddy. So... Opie's no dummy, right? I mean, Hold on. I, 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 wrong. <laughs> <laughs> He's what? <laughs> He's a okay. monumental no, dummy. He, he's he's, he's, <laughs> he's a out. smart broadcaster. Hear I hear you. Yeah. Hear me out. Yes. So he, he's clinging to life, right? He's clutching and grabbing for anything to have notoriety. His, his career is basically over. So he's got you guys with a great platform and yeah. Anthony with a great platform talking about him for 45 minutes it an doesn't hour. Matter. I, let me tell you something. So he, we know. I know what you're saying, dude, and I know that line of thinking. And if Opie thinks that me and Anthony making fun of him is going to help him, more power to him. <laughs> you know, I, I know what you're saying, but I'm not afraid to talk about somebody. Uh, and then they'll go, why are you talking about? Like, you know, I just, I know the, I've watched that bullshit and that pretend I don't worship Howard shit for 15 years. So I know yeah. that it's not like the whole don't always oh, talking about me to do show prep. No, you say something and we'll talk about you for 20 minutes and make fun of you. I'll make fun of him all day. And that, if, you, if you think that's going to help you to have me and Anthony making fun of you, more, God bless you. You're right, though, Steve. I appreciate the call, bud. Like, I, I think Jim and I are both aware yeah, that don't. this is a commercial and this is an intentional thing. This is... I don't know if it's intentional or not, because... I, I, it is. I mean, I, I can... The timing of the... Trust me when I tell you... Think you think that he wants to be bad-mouthed? He I, wants to be mouthed. He's an old-school radio guy. He's very smart. No, he's, he's, I disagree. I believe very smart. He's, <laughs> he's not very smart. He's very smart when it comes to building publicity, building press. It's something he did really, really well... Uh, when Opie and Anthony was on, you know, in terms of getting a buzz about the show at the expense of whatever. I mean, he's yeah. always been really good at building a buzz around the show, and I think that's what he's doing now, and he knows that, you know, a wave of negative may come, but with that wave of sure. negative, some positive will trickle in. People will become aware of what he's doing. Be become aware fine. of it. I don't, I don't look at it like, I'm not going to talk about him because it might be what he wants. I, I don't care if it's what he wants. I that's, don't mind that's... if it's what he wants. I'm okay with it. And if you think uh, being spoken about like this is a great commercial, then you then, then I'm sorry for you. If you think that's a great commercial, my uh, opinion more and more too is that like at the real base of all this, the reason why the show, the elements of the show continue to be clung together. The reason why this sort of conversation in this universe, the O and A universe, as it were, is something that just won't die is because, you know, it's a classic show. And the reason it's a classic is because everybody involved in that show happens to be very, very, very good at all this. Everybody involved. Yeah. And that's why, Some keeps, of us, yeah. you know, Opie is good at what Opie does. Which I'm good at what I do. You're good at what you I'm do. I'm tired of praising. Good. You know, I'm Anthony's tired of good. fucking praising Opie. You know, like the bottom line is I've said enough things about him that were nice mm -hmm. um, in, in life. And it's just like enough. Fucking enough. I think. Don't make fun of me for that. This is my attempt. You want to unload on me? Stupid. Feel free. <laughs> this is this is my attempt at a train. You want to you want to be no, I know. You, but you want to be the psycho. The de please do it. You want to go? Yup. This is my attempt at a transition. I'm just going to see if this sticks in the room. <laughs> go ahead, okay? buddy. I'm if, sorry. It does, if it doesn't stick in the room, we'll go right. <laughs> no, back. no, no. We can we can transition. I believe that what's I'm happening here is very similar to what Don Lemon did on his show last night with Trump. You know, I did not hear the response. I know Trump called him the okay, dumbest okay. person. All right, I feel uh, it. I think it's in sticking. Radio. I think it's sticking. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. no. Close. We wait. were so close that it was sticking. Did Trump say that? No. The dumbest person no, in radio? No, it was sticking but he's for another guy. Set. God damn he it. He criticized Don Lemon. He said he was really stupid. He took nine months to start no, his... No, 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 no. Did he say Don Lemon's a bum because he took the whole month in the beach and no, was no, wondering no, no, no. why Anderson Cooper took his spot? There's still some adhesive. Oh, sorry. It's still kind of sticking. Oh, sorry.